Hello and welcome traders to a live recap video on today's trades that I made this morning. If you guys watched this morning's live session, you will know that uh, we traded the TQQ and the SQQ today. And we're going to do a live recap on exactly that. Give me just a second to spread around my links and then I'll start sharing my screen. This is your first time watching. I go live every morning, Monday through Friday, 30 minutes pre-market and 30 minutes during market hours. So if you're interested in watching me trade live, then definitely subscribe and smash that little bell so you don't miss any of those future videos. Now, if you're wondering right now, I am uh, in a hotel and uh, I'm doing some traveling. And so, yeah, but while I'm traveling, doing some meetings and other things behind the scenes, I'm also still committed to you guys and going live every single morning for at least about an hour. All right. All right, this morning I forgot to share the links and spread the links around, so I'm gonna be doing that uh, today for sure right now instead of later. I think I noticed basically at the end of my live stream. So yeah, rocking the Superman muscle tee. And we are ready. So there's probably an easier way to do this. Don't know yet how, but that's okay. All right, welcome. Welcome to the live stream. Let's go ahead and share the screen. We're gonna talk about my recaps and our investments for the day. Hopefully that works. Did that push through? Yes, it did. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, we're gonna go to um, cash account. We're gonna go to stocks. All right. Hope you guys can hear me okay. It's a lot quieter right now than when I was at the uh, Starbucks this morning, so <laughs> definitely nice. Um, but definitely out of my element too. Um, don't have my you know, my normal trading station available. I kind of roughly put together this uh, laptop I had, an old laptop lying around. I say old, but it's actually a uh, a really nice, um, what the heck is this thing? Uh, I don't know what kind of laptop this is, but it has an NVIDIA GeForce GTX and an Intel Core i5. So somewhat decent laptop here to be uh, using for the trades. But the thing was, is getting the uh, setup just the way I wanted it for the trades. But the thing was, okay, cool. Making sure that the audio is there. Okay, so I'm going to be trying to do these more often. We're going to be doing live day trading sessions in the morning and then late night or, you know, after uh, in the evening recaps. So as you can see, TQQ has made new highs recently. If you traded this company yesterday, that was a 5% profit, and I do have a live stream on that. Just go to yesterday's live stream in the morning where we talk about buying oversold stocks and how to identify when a stock is oversold and how you could have made 5%. Now, 5% on $1,000 is 50 bucks. 5% on $2,000 is 100 bucks, so on and so forth. Now today, we traded this little dip here, or not dip, we, we traded this little movement up, and it 
has done nothing but sell off. Now, unfortunately, I did not lock in those profits this morning. I, if you guys remember in the live stream, I was going to let it play out a little bit. Now, it was a um, close to a $600 position. And as you can see right here is the levels where I bought and I watched it go up. Now, it did go up about 1230. I wasn't watching. And so, unfortunately, I did not sell. And I held all the way until around 1.30. Yep, I did, guys. I held until about 1.30. And unfortunately, I lost about 1%, which was about 6 or $7 on that trade. Now, I'm comfortable with losing about 1% of a position. I could still be holding it. Um, right now, it's basically just consolidating overnight. Now, it did cross over the EMA line and that SMA line, so we may see some type of recovery in the morning hours. Now, if I could get my dang chart to look at trades, and then we're going to go to, well, we don't have any open positions. We're going to show the uh, trade record down. Okay, and we're going to see if it's going to show me entering here. Hmm. It's not showing that I entered here or exited. Very odd. Okay, let's go ahead and go to um, account. Oh. Um, I wonder if it's going to show you guys my numbers. Nope. All right, guys, so this is my account, and not a lot of people show the back end account like this, okay? But I'm very super transparent. I want you guys to, to know that I'm very an honest person. I have a lot of integrity. I'm not here to lie to you guys. I'm not here to play games with you guys and waste your time. I'm here to be extremely transparent in everything that I do, so that way you guys can uh, see what I'm doing, find value in it, learn from my mistakes so that way you don't do the same thing. So as you can see here, today's P&L, we did have a loss of 0.92%, so almost 1%, or about $8.41. Okay, right now, our total account size is only $600. Buying power is $451 because we have some unsettled funds. Now this is a cash account because um, I just opened a margin account. There's nothing in the margin account, and I will be um, switching over either cash to the margin, or we may just start putting money in the margin account, either way. Um, but the point is here, guys, is what we wanted to show you was cumulative return in the last five days is about 5%, or $2.44 here, okay? Now, I don't mind showing you this account. I have a... Um, Another account with over $30,000 that I like to trade behind the scenes, but as a beginner investor, okay, and knowing when I started as a beginner, you're not going to have $30,000. You're not going to have unlimited day trades. What you're going to have is a lot, a lot of stress because you only have three day trades, okay? So as you can see down here, um, our trades for 321 were $63, $63, $63, buying one, 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 one. And then we bought a big bunch of shares here. And then we sold at 563.21. So there's my buys and sells. All right. And that is where we got the $8 loss right here. Now, what could I have done better with my trade? Well, I could have done a lot of things better. One, I could have Now, what I could have did better was cut my losses automatically and not necessarily keep my trade going, okay? At some point, I should have took a step back, should have sold my positions, Locked in. I was already up. 
I believe like a half percent point of 600. So, I mean, it was like $3, three or $4. I should have locked it in right at the end of our live stream or during our live stream this morning, locked in a few dollars of profit instead of holding and hoping that it would go up. Okay. I bought down here. I should have sold up here, even down here, but I didn't. I got distracted. I had way too many things going on. I didn't sleep good. I woke up at 4 a.m. to start driving on the road two and a half hours to sit down at a Starbucks, which was loud, um, noisy. I, um, again, just a lot of outside factors. I didn't have my trading station, wasn't comfortable, um, didn't have my warm cup of coffee. I had a cold frappuccino. So a lot of differences, um, a lot of differences moving forward. So I really wish that this wasn't so glitchy. And unfortunately it is, it's extremely glitchy. And I do apologize for that. See, I'm already, I'm just out of my comfort zone. So with that said, guys, should have locked in profits. I didn't, I should have. And as a result, we lost a few dollars. It was like eight bucks. Now tomorrow, we're gonna continue growing this account on Friday, and we're gonna make a few dollars back if the market sees fit. And how are we gonna do that, guys? Well, again, knowing when to lock in those profits, knowing when to sell either for a profit or even for a loss sometimes, guys. I could still be holding this company and I could I could be down even more. I could technically be down. Uh, an additional. Oh, uh, here. Two and a half percent. So I could have been down two and a half percent, but I was down less than one percent. For the fact that I sold, didn't want to hold overnight. I could hold overnight. It would have been smarter to probably do now looking at it. But again, as you can see, bad opportunity to buy to begin with. And I strongly believe that it was a bad opportunity. It was already showing signs of overbought. Now, I ended up buying in for that live stream. And again, understanding that I don't always have to make a trade. I didn't have to trade at these levels or trade at these levels and sell when your trade meets its sell opportunity. There's no reason why I should not have sold up here at the 1230 mark. Could have, but I didn't. And now moving forward, I can identify that. And I could have made, you know, 1% and made like six or seven dollars instead of losing eight bucks. So huge difference, that's something I'm gonna work on. Knowing when to sell, even if I sell early, I was anticipating it going up higher and I should have known better with the FOMC uh, Fed committee meeting. If you wanna watch a video on that, um, I do have a video talking about the three key highlights on that FOMC meeting on Wednesday. Okay, here we go. So now it's showing where I bought. I bought one here, one here, one here on the dip. I bought another one here when I started seeing signs of it breaking over top the EMA. And then it just kind of consolidated. And what I could have did was I could have sold up here. Again, even if only made a half a point or nothing, broke even, instead of holding it way down here where I sold right here. See nine shares. I sold at 321, March 21st. I bought three shares at 930, 931, 933. So I bought three shares with all within three minutes instead of maybe waiting for some of these other candles. Then I bought three shares here at 10 o'clock. Okay, no reason. No reason to have to do that. 
but an additional two here, 935, 937, and then another one at 940. So I made a lot of buys and one sell. When really, I didn't really have to even make that many buys. It wasn't showing signs of a lot of upward momentum. If anything, it was showing signs of consolidation. So I broke my own rule. Put a few dollars in here for consolidation. You wait for it to show confirmation. You add and then you sell at the top. I did not do that today. And as a result, we lost a couple dollars. Am I worried about it? No, because it was only a couple of bucks. So now tomorrow, we have a clean slate. We're not going to be starting way down here, which, you know, we're way up here, okay? Because we our average share cost was like 63-something. So, I mean, it was like right in the middle of where I could have sold and in the middle of where, um, you know, it could have been a lot worse if I was way up here than being about mid, okay? So now we have a fresh slate for tomorrow. And it looks like it's kind of consolidating a little bit below the SMA. So in tomorrow's session, we're going to be a little bit more patient. I'm not going to be as tired. And I'm still out of my comfort zone, but I'm hoping to get some good sleep tonight, get a good breakfast, and be here at 7 a.m. or 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for that 30-minute pre-market session for you guys and for me as well going to show up, put in some work on Friday, and we're going to continue growing this account. Now again, this is just a very small account right now. I usually trade with anywhere from two to three thousand dollars on this high risk account. But again, I'm transitioning from that cash account now to a margin account, which will then help me to um, better make money. I started thinking about it guys and I was like, well, anyone can trade with 30 plus thousand dollars, unlimited trades. I could buy 30 trades and then be done, right? Oh, that didn't work, sell. That didn't work, sell. Okay, buy here, sell, buy here, sell. Make all my money back. At three day trades, it makes it extremely hard for beginners to get that momentum. So we're gonna be doing swing trading, light day trading, and always remembering that you don't necessarily have to um, always day trade. Rather, you can also, one good tip about day trading too, is you can buy, 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 buy as it goes up. And then one sell would count that whole process as one single day trade. So you could buy 10 times and sell once all those positions or even one position and then that counts as a day trade. Now if you buy and then sell, that's one. Buy and then sell, that's two. But if you buy, 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 buy and then sell, that only counts as one day trade. So I hope this helps with your recap. I hope this gives you a little bit more insight into my portfolio on Webull. Now I do have three accounts. I have a Webull account now with two accounts inside, so that's cash and margin. I have a Robinhood account on margin, and I have a Moomoo account on margin. So technically that's nine day trades if I was under that $25,000 PDT rule. And then I also have a long-term TD Ameritrade account that I've had for, gosh, over 10 years now. And that's where the majority of my long-term trades or long-term investing positions are. I hope this brought some value. Hope you guys enjoyed. We just passed over 4,500 subscribers. So if you're new to this channel, you find value in this content, subscribe. Help us get to 5,000 subscribers by April. And also check out our um check out our community here let me pull it up real quick before you guys get off and i'm sorry for the lagginess it says that we're green and that we're good to go but i don't think we are and um anyways and check out our group 
over 70,000 members. What the heck? Sorry for all the lagginess, guys. Super laggy. This is a wind gate. Where's the card at? This is a, a wind gate hotel. The walls are paper thin. I can literally hear the neighbor's TV and talking. Paid a ridiculous amount of money for the room. I could hear him coughing and sneezing and everything behind me. I'm next to the um, elevator, the pool, the workout center. Walls are paper thin. And uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm not really digging the wind gate. I'm, I'm not trying to be ungrateful or anything, but uh, dang, people. You know what I mean? Dang. Get it together. You think being in a, a somewhat more upgraded, you know, hotel and our hotel room that the walls would be thicker and there's no one even here so like there's like a hundred rooms there's two or three levels four levels i don't see any cars in the parking lot but yet um but yet they put us right next to each other i don't get it And it's super, super glitchy. Okay, so if you are not a member of the community, what is happening? Why isn't it working now? Control, control web. Mm. Yeah, I'm totally, totally out of my comfort zone right now. What happened to... Wow. I guess I got out of my Facebook account. Here we go. So our page, we have 4.5 thousand followers on the Investing for Beginners page. And then if you um, get to the page, you can get a link or you can look at the comment below in the or the link below in the description where you can get to the group with over 70,000 members right now 70,000 members definitely check that out um, let's see I'm trying to get to the group here we show you a lot of different recaps uh, there's Riddit right now um, which was very popular IPO uh, that just happened today guys it happened today so definitely check that out I can get to the group here 71,000 members. It is a private community. We have several moderators and people here to help you learn and grow and how to invest. It's also a very safe space. Um, we are constantly blocking spammers and scammers. We will not have it. There's no second chances. And then you could also join our Discord, um, which I don't believe I have connected to this at the moment. Maybe I do. Let's see. Yeah, I don't think I do. I don't think I do got the Discord on here connected. Let's see if it lets me log in. Oh my gosh. You guys get to go through this with me. Uh, whatever. Or you can join the, the Discord as well. So thanks for joining. Thanks for being patient with this really laggy live stream. I'm going to adjust some settings for tomorrow because I believe this computer is still in... Um, I think it's still in green screen mode, which isn't necessarily good. Um, so I will do, I will be making some adjustments to that. So I'll catch you guys tomorrow, 7 a.m., 30 minutes pre-market, 30 minutes during market. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found value in this. If you did, smash that like button for me, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you all tomorrow.